Welcome to 101. I'm Rick Kaplan. My guest today is Dan Deegan. He's a partner with Focelli, Deegan, and Terrarana. Uh, how are you today, Dan? Very good, Rick. Nice to see you. So I, I see you have your whole uh, company name and look, your background. And you, just give me a little background of what uh, Focelli, Deegan, and Terrarana is all about. Sure. Sure. So that's a virtual background, which I figured out recently. It's better than <laughs> looking at a bunch of boxes behind me in my basement. So <laughs> you and 20 million other people have figured that out, how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so the firm is, um, you know, we're a full service law firm located in Uniondale, New York. We have about 65 attorneys. Uh, we have a, uh, we are very real estate focused, I would say. You know, we have um, zoning and land use. We have tax certiorari practice where we challenge the commercial taxes. We have a construction law practice uh, group. We have a, you know, we have corporate practice. We have a very large litigation uh, and employment law practice. Um, but, you know, I would say kind of one of the cores of our um, firm are real estate related, which I know is obviously um, relevant to your organization, your publication. So uh, you, what you specialize in is working with the IDA, IDAs, correct? Yes. So my, my, I head up the uh, firm's IDA practice group, and IDAs stand for Industrial Development Agencies, which are government entities um, that are created by New York State around the state to help incentivize and foster business development. So right now, working with all kinds of government offices and municipalities, it must be kind of difficult because some of them are limited or even closed. Well, it's interesting because, you know, the mission of the IDAs and, you know, there's a Nassau County IDA, a Suffolk County IDA, and then some of the towns have IDAs as well. Their mission is to facilitate and um, make business better and, you know, help businesses and help companies that are looking to do business. So more than ever, you know, given the current crisis, businesses, um, you know, are in need of assistance. So towards that end, the IDAs really have been pretty, I would say, cutting edge in terms of getting up to speed with uh, virtual meetings. I've participated in several virtual public board meetings, uh, as well as public hearings, where uh, basically the public has the ability to um, tune in online and see the board meeting as it takes place. Um, all the participants are participating virtually and there's exhibits that can be shown. And uh, so I would say the business of the IDAs has continued to move forward and they pretty much since early April um, have you know, gotten back up to speed, I would say. So it's almost business as usual. <laughs> it's, I it's say almost. Different. <laughs> it's different, you're right. It's almost, I would say the business is getting done that they're, that they're um, charged with doing. Um, it's just being done slightly different ways that are new for everybody. Um, a lot of the work of the IDAs are done by their uh, private law firms that represent the IDAs. So we interface as a law firm with those law firms um, pretty um, seamlessly uh, through internet and you know through emails, uh, telephone, obviously. And um, you know we've been able to close deals and keep deals moving uh, despite the current situation. So, well, can you imagine if this was ten or fifteen years ago without having any all this new technology? Yeah, it's incredible, you know. I mean, this keeps everything rolling somewhat. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, speaking for myself and my profession, sitting, or for my area of the law anyway, I'm in my basement, but I've got two screens up. I've got my, uh, you know, keyboard, I got my laptop. It's almost, it's not much different than me sitting in my office. The only thing is I don't have a secretary outside my office, but she's available at her house to help me do things. And uh, we've been able to keep business going and reviewing documents. So much is driven electronically technology already anyway uh, compared to 15 years ago that um, it can be seamless to a certain extent. Yeah it's not that picture of an attorney sitting behind a desk with files stacked above his head on his desk. <laughs> and that's right now of course the litigation um, my litigation partners and the litigation group would tell a different story you know because the courts have been pretty much closed they're not accepting new filings it's, they're just getting up to speed in terms of doing depositions and other things but obviously there aren't any jury trials. There's nobody appearing in courtrooms, making oral arguments and that kind of stuff. But they're starting to, the court system's starting to get going now as well. And they're, uh, you know, going to, going to be having conferences, I believe, 
it's not my area of law, but from what I understand, you know, the courts are starting to get up to speed with the video conferencing and uh, that will start soon. Well, it's, it's good to hear people are still getting some things done, you know, and, and the wheels are still moving somewhat. Hopefully that will continuously change to get better. Uh, so as, as an attorney, <laughs> your advice to developers uh, are companies that are uh, considering exploring IDA benefits, what would you say, what would you recommend to them? Well, I would say that, you know, I think IDAs are looking to be part of the solution to the current problem that we're all facing, which is this tremendous uh, interruption and disruption of business and people getting laid off. You know, the ideas are very much about encouraging employment. That's their primary mission is to facilitate companies that are employing people. Uh, my point would be that I think now, as much as ever, and maybe more than ever, the IDAs will be looking to assist businesses that need assistance in terms of, you know, expanding their business, just retaining what they have in terms of, you know, if there's a lease renewal um, opportunity or option coming up to them, or if they have an opportunity to buy something, whatever, whatever they're doing in furtherance of their business, I think the IDAs now as much or more than ever would be willing to help assist that. And I would encourage, you know, companies that are, have a major move ahead of them or decision ahead of them as to whether or not they're going to stay where they are, move, expand, or you know, even contract, you know, that maybe they do so in um, consultation with the IDA to see if the IDA can be of assistance. Now, and depending on where the project's located and where the property's located will depend which IDA you go to. Do you see projects uh, still going on right now? Or do they put a halt to that? Well, it's interesting because projects, you know, on Long Island certainly and other places take a long time from the, when you have the idea until the building is actually built and we talk about um, construction projects. So to the extent that some of the projects are actually under construction, the, the um, different executive orders have certainly impacted it to the extent that they're not considered essential construction. Uh, so, you know, the construction of projects certainly has been interrupted right now, a lot of them, and a lot of our clients have been calling us asking, you know, for assistance in interpreting what the regulations are, whether or not they are uh, considered essential or not. Um, a lot of the other projects which have been in the pipeline and on the drawing boards for some time, in some cases many years are in the middle of the process of getting towards you know ultimately a building permit. <laughs> those, those are still moving forward. A lot of the clients you know I think it certainly was an initial pause for a few weeks but to the extent that a lot of these projects are far down the line I think the clients have made the determination most of them anyway that we've got to keep processing these and you know, we're not building today, we may be still be building six months or a year or two years from now. So let's not, you know, let's keep the process going to the extent yeah, Let's not stop now. Yeah, exactly. And that's been our experience. I'm sure there's exceptions to that. And certainly we've had a couple of clients who have called and said, that big project we were gonna do, right now we're, we're putting it off for a year. So let's talk a year from now. That's happened on two different occasions with two different clients. Well, that's, hey, you. That's what's going to happen. You know, everyone's got this uncertainty that they, they're thinking. So you're going to have people that say, yeah, I think it's going to open up and then everything's going to be fine. And then some people will say, you know, I don't know what's going to happen for the next two years. So let's hold yeah. off. But Exactly. I mean, I'm an optimist and I think that, um, you know, a lot of it is going to be driven by what people think is going to happen. If everybody sends to have confidence that things are going to come back, they'll start to move. I think. Obviously, in the big picture, things seem to be moving in the right direction from a health perspective. But, um, you know, as that goes, it's going to be people's confidence and hopefully their willingness, you know, to keep spending money and putting money into these projects and um, which ultimately end up in being, you know, affordable housing, uh, you know, commercial properties, um, all things that, you know, are needed by society and, and all the jobs that go along with them. So hopefully we'll get through this. Well, lots of great information. We're speaking with Daniel De Deegan, but we'll call you Dan Deegan. <laughs> He's a partner with Ficelli Deegan and Terrarana. And Dan, I wish you the best. I hope everyone in your family and your company stay safe and have a pleasant afternoon. Well, same to you, Rick. It was very nice talking with you. Thank you for watching today's interview. If you'd like to be a guest, a sponsor, or even advertise in the New England Real Estate Journal. You'll find our contact information in the description box below. 
You can also find all our social media platforms so you can follow us and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.